I'm Malcolm Van Dels, and this is an excerpt from Do the Wrong Thing, a book series or extra long novel that opens with a woman trying to kill herself. She says, I don't know why I tried to do this, and by way of explanation, tells her life story. We're in book two. Previously in Do the Wrong Thing, Ava took an art class and meditated on the nature of existence, reality, and consciousness. So this is a continuation of a chapter called Meat Bone. I forgot to mention, that day last semester when I ran into Julian in the bar, I also ran into John's friend, Gerald. He was alone, drinking a beer in the front room. After I left Julian, I walked past him. He looked up at me and smiled and said, hi. This made my heart sore. Gerald, who looks like he belongs on trendy, arty, intimidating Quest Street in Concord, not at Birmingham U. Gerald, he goes to nightclubs and parties, knows all about popular music and acts like he's much, much better than everyone around him, which I kind of think he is. He said hi to me. Unless you count the people I went to elementary and secondary school with, people I banished from my life for decades and only now interact with sporadically on Facebook, Gerald is my oldest friend. Funny, I'd never have guessed it when we met, or even as our friendship lurched along with massive gaps in contact and communication over the decades, but suddenly there it was. So if you meet an art snob in your early 20s and for whatever reason they persevere in befriending you, know that they might become your longest lived in contact friend, but they won't even know it. Oh, Gerald, hi. Lost in thought. My studies in 17th century literature professor asks, I look up, he's standing in front of me where two paths meet in the center of a grassy square that divides the old campus buildings from the new. I smile and snort quietly like my dad, more like nothing in my head. He laughs and falls in step beside me. What are your plans for when you finish your degree? I shrug. I really don't think about it, I tell him. Grad school? He sounds hopeful. I look at him. He's inviting me into a club, I realize. Grad school would be considerably different than undergrad, judging by his expression. I don't know. My grades aren't very good. His eyebrows jut up. What's your average? B plus. I blow my exams every year. Nerves. Oh, that's too bad, but B plus is fine for grad school. Perfectly fine. I nod. You'd think I'd be ecstatic, but instead I feel suffocated, like a trap is closing around me, like I'd end up stuck in the same dull life he has. No, not dull. Uninteresting, uneventful, unchallenging, like a domesticated animal or a hothouse flower. Gerald and I stand beside each other on a mezzanine above two dance floors separated by a walkway. We watch the men dance, it's almost all men, and drink. When Bill arrives, Gerald leaves to dance. He's really good. Next chapter, art. Gerald introduces me to a new group of students. They don't wear Gap or Zara, but they aren't rocker like me either. A girl named Erin says she buys all her clothes at the Salvation Army. I can't believe it. She chooses to wear secondhand clothes. What courage. I go to the Salvation Army. I walk past the entrance several times before I have the guts to go in. That smell, sweat, mold, and I swear, microscopic fibers floating in the air have their own odor. Is cotton different from polyester? Does polyester, a plastic, release fibers? The smell is earthy, like dirt. The cotton is going back to its place of birth, or trying to because the city's concrete won't let it through. I don't know about the polyester. I try on an extra, extra large men's winter overcoat that makes me look like Paddington Bear. Perfect. I try on a men's shirt so large it comes down to my knees. The shirt is not pure white like Gerald's. It's got pastel pinstripes, but this is even better because I don't want to follow anyone. I have to roll up its sleeves twice for my hands to stick out at the ends. I find a huge red dress with garish magenta flowers. The material is a ribbed polyester so thick the dress can almost stand up on its own. I look like a paper doll when I put it on. I'll wash out that smell. Back to men's for a pair of shoes, I find a brown pair, distressed leather with gold buckles on the tops and squarish toes, shoes an Italian grandfather would wear. I have a brain light up or whatever it's called. 
I'm going to buy tights that are too big for me too. They'll sag around my knees and ankles. Perfect. Julian's face is open, bright. Hi, he exclaims. My face is neither. Hi. I mean, I'm delighted that he's delighted to see me, but even though I've been thinking about him now face to face, I want to be strong. I want to be independent. My hair is in two long braids. I've got my pastel striped men's shirt on. I know how different I look and I'm proud. Julian hesitates, his smile crumples. How's it going? I ask. Students stream out of the auditorium around us. Fine, he says you. He makes a motion to touch my arm, but I back away. I better get the reel packed up, I say. Nice to see you. Hi, uh, is Julian there? Julian's mom's voice changes from happy to angry. Maybe it's guarded. Julian has a guest, she says. He can't come to the phone. Oh, okay, tell him I call. She hangs up, she barely says bye. The self-destructive feelings I've been pushing down and down erupt and I stare at my wrists. The apartment is empty, quiet. Susan's at Bob's again, she's always at Bob's. I start to cry. I don't understand why I'm crying. I see Julian and the beautiful East Indian girl arguing quietly between stacks at the library. Later, I see her at a desk. And I look at what she's writing when I walk by. Chanda, 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 her name, over and over again in a column in her notebook. I did the right thing, breaking up with Julian, otherwise this would be me. September 7th, 2016, 3 p.m. Does it matter that I never had orgasms with Julian? I mean, we only went out for, what, at most four months. No one even knows about him, except Gerald. I've never mentioned Julian to anyone. So to be fair, I've never mentioned most people on events in my life to anyone. Meatbone, meatbone. My meatbone goes to a secondhand clothing store, not a Salvation Army, but a trendy one where the used clothes are carefully chosen, cleaned and pressed by another meatbone. I don't buy anything. I'm gonna wear Salvation Army clothes only, minus underwear and socks, of course. The older male owner of the store looks at me appreciatively. I smile back. I mean, I want someone to talk to and if a guy wants to fuck, he'll talk. He tells me about his store, how he travels all over the world and keeps it going with help when he's gone. 